Hi, and welcome to this section of the Pre-Algebra Tutor. And here we're going to begin to cover some very, very important topics in this section and the next few sections. This section is on the topic of adding integers. And if you remember from a couple sections ago, an integer is a positive number, negative number, or zero. No decimal point involved, it's just the whole numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and on positive and on negative. So we have the negative numbers and the positive numbers to deal with, and we're going to learn how to add them in this section. So we've, we've broken up the sections here. This one is on adding integers, and then we'll have one on subtracting integers, and then multiplying integers, and then dividing integers. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is not hard. It's nothing, nothing more difficult than your third grade math that you learned before. It's just there's a couple of more rules to learn because we have negative numbers involved. And I'm going to tell you something. I want you to watch this section and practice enough problems to where you really feel like you really and truly understand and can do these kinds of things because a lot of people, if they don't understand how to add numbers properly, negative and positive numbers properly, or subtract them, multiply them, divide them, then of course when you get to equations and other things later on, it's just going to seem hard and it doesn't have to be that way. So we've got a ton of example problems, a ton of different ways to memorize and learn the little rules involved, and we're going to learn it by doing. Now, we're going to get into the, the fun topic of adding integers together. Some of it's going to seem trivial. Some of it is going to seem like, wow, that's, that's not so hard, and I hope it's the latter. And so let's go ahead and do that now. There are a few rules, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the rules, give some examples as we do it, and then we're going to hit a ton of problems. So if you don't think you quite get it as we hit the rule the first time, that's okay. Just keep going and watch all the examples. It will come to you by repetition. You'll see the patterns involved. So don't give up if you don't quite get it on the first one. The rules that we're going to have okay, uh, are basically going to look like this. Some of them, like I said, are going to be trivial. So here are the rules. The first rule is if we're adding a positive number, so I'm going to use the word P, the POS, positive, to a positive number. So in other words, positive to positive, right? What is going to happen in that case? The result, these little arrows I'm going to tell you, this is the result. So the result of this addition is positive. All right, now this should come as no surprise to you. I'm writing it down in words, so you might, you might be a little bit taken aback. But what this is just saying is that, yeah, you have positive and negative numbers, all right, that we're going to be dealing with. But we're going to take it one case at a time. Let's look at the case, the easy case, positive plus positive. You know from your childhood that 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 plus 3 is 5, et cetera, et cetera. Positive plus positive is always positive. If I have three pencils and I add three more pencils, then I'm going to get six pencils. It's always positive. Positive plus positive gives me a positive number. So congratulations. You already learned how to add some integers together. So some examples. Again, I know it's trivial, but just to make it clear, 3 plus 4 is 7. This is a positive plus a positive. You're always going to get a positive. 5 plus 5 is 10. Always going to get a positive. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. Always going to get a positive. So this would be like 3 cars plus 4 more cars. Going to give me 7 cars altogether. So I wanted to start with the most, you know, the easiest of the cases because, you know, you'll have to use it just like any of the other cases and, and you'll get some confidence from knowing that you already know how to do this stuff. Positive plus positive always gives you positive. No big deal. Now the next case, again, is really a little bit uh, you know, different from maybe anything you've had to do before, but it's definitely not hard. If you're adding, if you're adding a negative number to a negative number, this is the next easiest case. In other words, a negative to a negative number, then the result the result is always negative. Negative, right? So it's always going to be negative. So negative plus negative is always going to give you a negative. Now, before we do any problems or examples or anything, I want you to think about what this means, right? I told you a negative number in the previous sections. A negative number is nothing more than basically explaining when, when, when you don't have something, but in fact you owe something to somebody else. So if I have negative 5 uh, apples, 
then I don't actually have any apples at all. I actually owe somebody else. I've borrowed five apples. You know, so I didn't have anything to begin with, but somehow I owe somebody else five apples. So the way I represent that is negative five apples or negative five. Now let me ask you, if I already owe somebody five apples, so I have negative five apples, but then I go down the street and I borrow five more apples from somebody else, so I, I actually owe somebody else five more apples, so that's another negative five apples. Then I have the negative five apples that I had to begin with because I owed somebody else five apples, and then I owe some a different person five more apples because I borrowed some more. Then how many do I owe altogether? How many do I owe altogether? I owe five apples to this guy and I owe five apples to this guy, so altogether I actually owe 10 apples. So that's negative 10 because in our whole algebra world, negative means a deficit, something that you owe somebody else. It's on the other side of the number line, on the other side of zero. So if I owe three band-aids to somebody and then I go borrow five more, then the negative three plus the negative five, I'm going to owe eight band-aids altogether. So that's a negative eight. So that's what I'm saying. When you add a negative number to a negative number, the answer is always negative. Because if you start out owing somebody something, and then you borrow more stuff, you're always going to owe something in the end. And you're going to owe the addition of those two things because you, you borrowed more stuff. Right? So let's do some quick examples to show you know, how this might work. So if you had negative 3 plus negative 3, that would be negative 6. So if I borrowed three band-aids and I borrowed three additional band-aids, then in the end of the day I'm going to owe all these people six band-aids total. So you see what you're doing here is when you're adding negative numbers together, you end up adding the absolute values together 3 plus 3, that's, that's why we had to learn absolute value. You add the 3 plus 3 to get 6, but the sign that you put out front is going to always be negative in this case because negative plus negative is negative. That's what I'm trying to teach you by patterns here. So another example, if I had negative 2 plus negative 3, I'm going to add the absolute values together, so I'm going to have 5, but it's negative plus negative, so I'm going to actually put a negative 5 there. So if I already owed somebody two cotton balls and I borrowed three more cotton balls and at the end of the day I owe all these people five cotton balls altogether. So negative four plus negative five is equal to adding the absolute values together. Four plus five gives me nine but I can't put positive nine. It's got to be negative nine because I already owed somebody four you know, tires, and then I borrowed five more tires, so I owe nine tires altogether. That's what the negative sign means. And so one more, negative two plus negative 11. If I want to add them, I'm going to add the absolute values. Two plus 11 is 13, but the answer is not positive 13. That wouldn't even make any sense. If I owe somebody something and then I borrow more stuff, I'm not going to have positive. I'm going to have a negative uh, number because I'm going to owe 13 uh, units of whatever 13 candy bars, if I, had, if I borrowed two to begin with and then I borrow 11 more later in the day, I'm going to owe 13 candy bars altogether. So you see, you've already learned something that a lot of people struggle with for a long time in pre-algebra, adding these negative numbers together. But if you know what it means, it is definitely not hard. Now you definitely need to remember this, negative plus negative is negative, but hopefully with a few of these examples, I've uh, solidified it a little bit more for you. Now I want to show you one more thing with the number line. Definitely do it exactly the way in which I showed you, but let's take this one right here for instance. Let's